In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 27 to 39, it talks about that the Lord Jesus Christ met, who is a tax collector by the name of Levi. And so the Lord Jesus Christ calls Levi to follow him. But it wasn't that simple. And he said to Levi, follow me. Just like, for example, Abu Nasriel, when, when he first was ordained, he followed Christ. And so did the priest and the deacons and everybody and laity when the Lord calls him. But there's different ways of experiencing that calling. For example, centuries ago, around the 15th century, to be exact, 1504, in Europe, they got this beautiful marble and they brought it to Florence and from the quarries of Carrera next to Florence. And they thought they were going to sculpt a beautiful Old Testament prophet. When Donatello saw that the marble was flawed, he refused to sculpt anything with it and so left it at the bottom of the cathedral, just useless block of marble meaning nothing to anybody. But another sculptor came in the same year, and when he examined the beauty of this flawed marble, he decided that he was going to do something with it, and he was inspired to do something great with it. After a period of time, the great artists of the day, including da Vinci and Botticelli, came to see the unveiling well, this was Michelangelo's David that he sculpted, and this is a true story. God looks at us in our brokenness, and somehow that we are flawed, yet he calls us. He does not call us a perfect, he doesn't come to the saints, he comes to the sick of his people, for he is the physician. This encounter between the Lord Jesus Christ and Levi was an amazing encounter. I imagine that the, the fisherman that he had really called, for Matthew was the number five that was called. Before that, he called the four fishermen. And therefore, the calling of Levi would have caused a great tension between the apostles. Why? Between Simon and Andrew and James and John. Why? Because it was Matthew that used to tax the fishermen. And therefore, the fishermen had to give 20% of their product to the tax collector. So imagine that Peter was not overly pleased to be joined to a tax collector and expected that some, some sort of homogenous church, that we all look the same and we all act the same and we all believed in the same. But this is not the way the Lord works. A background on Levi, he worked for the great uh, for the uh, king Herod Antipas, who owned lock, stock, and barrel, and ran the Roman administration of the area. And therefore, Levi had a franchise that he would have actually approached and applied for, and he would have won that type of grant to run those taxes. Now, those taxes was not something that was taxed like today, we put modern eyes and say we pay tax. No, no, it was he had to remediate something to the Roman Empire and the rest is his. So it was a very rich position that he had won amongst numerous Jews, but he was considered a traitor of the time because they would use tactics like extortion and intimidation to drive the taxes. And therefore, there was also something called the wheel tax, funnily enough. The, what you, were you coming in the cart? If you have the number of wheels, he would tax you per wheel. And if you, some type of standover tactics, if you were not able to tax, then the tax collector would say to you, hey, Angelus, I'll send you, I'll, I'll pay for you the 50 drachmas that you owe me. But then he later on, he levies interest, ridiculous interest on it. And then, so he wasn't, the point I'm trying to get to, he wasn't overly popular within <laughs> his Jewish friendships, and he was considered to be a traitor of the day. Even Simon, Simon and Peter, 
would not have been overly pleased with the decision of the Lord that he had chosen Levi, who later became Matthew. But have a look at the consequence of what happens when Levi is called. The Lord says to him, follow me. That's all he does. He says, follow me. Now, Matthew had a stall, a stall. And therefore, he left everything and just followed in totality. He left the franchise. He left his business. He left his tax collection. He left everything and just followed him. When Peter followed Christ, he still is, had his house on Lake Genesaret and he had his wife there. When Levi left everything, he left everything and immediately and he followed him. Not only that, he had a great feast at his house. Why the great feast? Because it showed that Levi wanted to introduce to her his treacherous friends, his friends that are of some semi reputation, repute, uh, reputation of a bit of disrepute because no Jew would have been his friend, included Gentile and Jews, then he wanted to have a great feast for the Lord to introduce his Savior to his friends. He wanted to show them the change that he had encountered the Messiah, and he wanted them to have equal opportunity of the same revelation and of the same salvation. He left everything behind. He wasn't worried about his career. He wasn't worried about his reputation. He wasn't worried about his friendships. He wasn't worried about how he's going to live tomorrow. He left everything behind. He didn't try to sell his business. A lot of us would. They say, come on, let, become, uh, let's go and do mission work for 10 years. Hold on, we're not going to sell my house. I'm going to get some tickets. I'm going to settle everything. <laughs> what did Levi do? He left immediately, that very second, and had a feast for the Lord. It is a remarkable transition from a remarkable man. And then Luke talks about him as the tax collector. He doesn't refer to him by name. In the Gospel of Matthew, he talks about himself. <laughs> Just shows you the amazing humility of the transition of the human life. And therefore, when we encounter Christ, the change is dramatic. But the Lord came to shepherd those people. He came as a physician to those who are sick. Some of us, we want a church that looks like us. But that's not what the Lord wanted. He wanted to bring in the outcast, the lost, the ones who need support, the one that needs love, the ones who are broken, the ones who are feeble, and the ones who are flawed, just like Levi was. And therefore... Levi followed the Lord Christ in earnestness from that point onwards. And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers of the day did not like, when he, he was also invited to the feast, did not like see at the feast day what they saw. They saw a whole number of people, mostly all sinners and those who were rejected by the law of the day. And they had the understanding what is defiled, what's not defiled according to the old tradition laws. Therefore, they would not have ever encountered a prophet previously, for they considered him as a prophet, and that God himself would invite those who are needy and sick to, to the feast itself. We need to encourage us, just like Levi, to have a feast for the Lord Christ, for our friends and friendships and our families, to bring them and let them introduce them to the church and to the potential of salvation. But unfortunately, none of us do that. None of us provide the sheer potentiality of allowing Christ to work. And we say things like, you know, when we talk, say to Abuna, uh, pick up the phone, uh, why don't you bring uh, John and uh, Henry with you? He said, no, 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 John doesn't like church, and uh, Henry uh, has, has left the church a long time ago, and this other girl is living in sin, and they're not interested in the church. How do you know? How do you know they're not interested in the church? How do you know that the role of the Holy Spirit is to inspire these people to change? 
All your job is to do is like Matthew, is provide a feast for the day and invite Christ in. And therefore, and this is what Matthew did. He began the evangelism almost immediately. How many people have we let go? And through this difficult time, how many people have we not invited? How many people have we not asked for? And how many people are lost and thirsty? Therefore, let us be like Levi. Let us be like Matthew and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our house and immediately leave, leave what we have done and follow the Lord, just like who, like St. Fatini, just like who, St. Paul, who gave everything up, and many, many of the church fathers and some of the saints and the hermits, etc., who have left everything for the Lord Christ. There are many ways to posture that calling, to analyze, to overconsider it, to reflect on it, to see quickly what I'm going to lose versus what I'm going to gain. And the Lord does not advertise this in a very attractive way. He says, if you follow me and preach to all nations, for they will, they will consume you like wolves, like sheep to wolves, and you'll have nothing, but you'll be glorified in my name. Not a tremendous advertisement to join the service, but it's true. And the wonderful lady that I met in mission a long time ago, she was around 68 years old. And she was called by Christ in around the 1960s. And she was a doctor. And you really, you meet and encounter certain people like that and you stand in awe. You stand in awe at their sacrifice to the Lord. And she told me that all she heard was two words. She heard, follow me. That's all she heard, follow me. And she was a doctor. She was successful. She was happy. She lived in the UK. Follow away, Lord. Go to PNG, Papua New Guinea. In the 1960s, in the 1960s, not in 2020, where there was no medicine, there was no doctors, there was nothing, there was no hospitals, it was just anarchy. It was very much tribal. She didn't even stay in Port Moresby Day. She went into the wilderness. Well, decades later, I encounter her. I say to her, she looks at me and says, uh, Father Mark, do you think I can do, do you think I'm capable of doing just one more period? I said, what period? I just want to do one more period of five years in PNG. That would be 50 years. And she practiced medicine there, and I told her a very important question, just like you would naturally ask, which is, how did you live? And how did you live as a young woman who left in the mid-60s as a doctor from the UK and leave everything behind and leave your family and your brother and your parents and your friends and back of those, it would have been one way, right? You're not going to go come back like we did today. How did, what did you do? How did you live? And she said to me straight in the eyes, and she said, just like the apostles, for the Lord said to me, you will not yearn for anything, no food, nothing. She said to me, when I left my parents, God gave me great appearance in PNG. When I left my brother, now I have tens of brothers and tens of sisters. When I left my friends, now I have more sincere friends and more loving friends that I can't live without and they can't live without me. So God, when you sacrifice and you do as Levi does and you follow him truly, God compensates. That's why when we go to the mission field and we follow Christ in earnestness, we desire nothing, including our own parents including our own sisters, and dare I say, like Peter, including his own wife. May God bless you, and glory be to God for your morning.